This is part two of my thoughts on max min, the most prevalent means of managing stocks of inventory. I added to the tagline, especially in times of change. Let's dig into how max mins work when something happens different. And by the way, isn't that inevitable? Everything changes. Now here's SKU A in location X. It takes four weeks to get more and consumption pulls out 15 a month. Max is 58, min is 28. Let's see what happens when demand falls off. Here's max min running. Starting the first of the year, now the green line here represents the maximum, the orange line is the minimum, and the dark blue line is the on-hand inventory. You can see that it fluctuates as low as 14 units and as high as 45. No problem, right? Without any warning, and is there ever any warning of things like this? It doesn't seem like it. The biggest customer switches to a competitor. How's Sally, the purchasing clerk, supposed to know this? Unless it's a top customer or a really big product, this type of thing normally escapes notice. The only difference here is that the on-hand declines slower than it declined before. Nothing really to notice. But then Ricky, the salesman, introduces both of his customers, the only two remaining customers, to a new product, and they test the new product and agree to switch over. Ricky kind of remembers that there were other users of this product, but he didn't know that the biggest customer had skipped out a few months earlier. It wasn't his customer. And he also wasn't sure that his two customers that he just switched over were the only two other customers for SKU A. So he doesn't get around to mentioning it to Sally. After all, Ricky doesn't work for Sally. Thus, the max min levels don't get adjusted. Notice that the on hand level dropped through the minimum mid August. That's right here. It dropped down through the min. At that time, it means an order was placed for 30 units. Boom, here's the order being received in September, but there hasn't been a single order placed since September 1st. Murphy's Law. The likelihood of getting stuck with dead inventory at 90% of the maximum is directly proportional to the size of the inventory investment. This is Murphy's Law number 485. You know what I mean. Happens to you all the time. Let's check how it would have worked out if back in the spring you had switched to inventory buffering like we use. First, let's compare the two. Which pile of dead inventory would you prefer? This or this? This or this? About 54, something like that, or maybe only eight. What are we doing differently? We make sure that we keep as much coming in as has gone out over the last four weeks. That matches the flow out with the flow in. Then the system monitors for the level of inventory daily. Nobody has to notice that the biggest customers lost back on the 1st of June. The consequence is that on hand is persistently in the green zone, as you see right here. Soon after, the buffer drops again and again. Sally doesn't have to check every product every day. And five assistants who might be able to do it are expensive and they require managing. Here's an example of a steadily growing product. New customers kept adopting it, and average sales per month start out at 15, that's this gray line here, and then grow up to 60 by the end of the time frame. That's consumption in the replenishment time, CIRT. At first, the max min approach tolerates growth pretty well. Orders go from being placed every two months to every month, a little more work, but no big deal. In early August, Sally raises the max min. You see them both going up right here in early August. What triggers are to change the max and the min? Don't fall for thinking that Sally knew the demand had increased. She has way too many SKUs to monitor them all. No, what triggered the increases to the max and the min in early August and mid-October was stockouts. Somebody yelled 
when they didn't have what they needed. Both times, Sally went back and recalculated, based on the past, how much should be ordered to make the reorder interval about 60 days and raise the minimum so she'd be triggered to order sooner. That's some more safe. Let's see how buffer management would have fared with the same consumption pattern. Exact same example of consumption in the same scale. Let's go back and forth again. Old way, max min, buffer management. Max min, inventory buffers. Can you see that there are no shortages and significantly less inventory required to fully meet the ever-growing demand? Our friend Sally has to do exactly nothing to maintain full availability. Instead, she used her time to work on the cost of high dollar items. During this year so far, she has lowered overall costs by 4%. She earned a raise and a claim from Ricky, who now spends none of his time apologizing to customers for the shortages and has added 16 new customers worth 32% more business for the company. Profits have soared to record levels, and the company has recovered enough cash to pay down its line and credit in half. If you use max min and nothing changes, you'll have too much inventory. If you use max min and demand collapses, you'll have five to ten times more dead inventory. If you use max min and demand grows, you will have shortages until it kills the growth. Listen to me now. I'm telling you that the shortages will be the cause that stops the growth from being even more. You'll think, well, this is a relief. Things are back under control around here. And they will be under control, but not at as good a level as they could have been. But you don't even think the ROI is bad because you've never seen the potential of your company to produce a good ROI. And neither have any of your friends. Psst, they use Max Min too. How about moving to our inventory buffering approach? We did it 17 years ago and have had time to become true experts. Furthermore, what if you don't have to learn anything new and you just enjoyed much better growth and ROI? If no work and better results in terms of profits, cash position, and workforce satisfaction sounds good, sign up to be a supply stream client. It gives you a decisive competitive edge in the marketplace. To learn more about how good it is for everybody in your company, go to our website, neverrunout.com. There are little vignettes, one-minute videos about each person's point of view. Check it out. And just email us at supplystream at ssco.pro to get started, and we'll make you the hero. Thanks. Bye.